Hey everybody, you're looking live at the Procter & Gamble World Headquarters. There's a tremor moving through the company tonight. The tide in the proxy fight appears to have turned a bit. A recount appears to give activist investor Nelson Peltz a seat at the company's table by the slimmest of margins. Peltz has promised to break apart the company to make it more profitable. We begin our team coverage tonight with Brad Underwood with what this could mean for the region. At the moment, Nelson Peltz has a margin of victory of 43,000 votes or one six hundredth of a percent. The margin is minuscule, but Pelt says he wants to make king-size changes to a company that's been the backbone of Cincinnati for nearly 200 years. It's a shock. It's still preliminary, so we're still waiting on the absolute final count. But you know, I think it's a shock for everyone. It wasn't expected. Pelt's lost a bid to be a board member last month by six million votes from shareholders. But here's the thing: if it sticks, he's just one member of a board. He could make some changes, but right now there aren't a lot of people out there that think he's got the power to move P&G out of the Queen City. With any company and there's a change, you always wonder how that's going to impact anything. And, you know, all you can really do is wait and see. And it might be better for the company. It might be better for the employee. It might not. So it's just way too early to tell what the impact it will have on, on anyone within the company. Cincinnati City Council member Amy Murray worked for P&G for 14 years. As a former employee and now a council member, she knows what the company means to the city and the region. So does Kurt Reiber, the president and CEO of the Free Store Food Bank. When we look at uh, folks like Procter & Gamble or Macy's or Kroger or GE, those are folks that you know continue to give back to this community, both financially as well as with their time. While Reiber says they'll wait for the dust to settle at the corporate level with pelts, they're not concerned about things changing at home. Bottom line is, you know, the fabric of what P Procter & Gamble is all about is a community-oriented business, and I don't think that would change just with having a, another individual uh, added to the board. Now again, these results, they are preliminary and uh, subject to review and of course can be challenged by Procter & Gamble. Now at this time we haven't heard that they plan to do that, but you have to imagine that at some point they would at least consider challenging this as we continue to move forward. So to be continued. Back to you guys. Good way to put it, Brad Underwood. Thank